A new federal rule dramatically undermines insurance reforms of the Affordable Care Act. It's being called the Benefit and Payment Parameters Rule for 2019. This is a rule that was finalized by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services on April 9th. It's also being referred to as the April 9th Rule, which is actually an annual Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services omnibus rule. Rules like this happen on an annual schedule intended to make some corrections or tweaks in advance of the upcoming marketplace rule. A marketplace year. These have been usual rules coming out every year, and we haven't seen one yet out of the Trump administration. This one has been a long time in the making, but we also had an interruption when there was a regular schedule to see this rule of what was called the market stabilization rule. The Trump administration snuck in there some of their market reforms, which dramatically undermined things like the duration of the open enrollment period, how special enrollment periods were supposed to work, and things like network adequacy and how that was going to be reformulated. So that already happened in advance of the last open enrollment period. And now we're seeing this omnibus rule for the first time, which makes dramatic changes to the marketplace. This is the first one out of the administration, but the language they're using, we've seen before. The Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, has been using their same talking points, the goals of enhancing the rules of role of states, providing states with flexibility. You see the flexibility term sprinkled all throughout the, the rule language and reducing unnecessary regulatory burden. They're trying to chip away at some of the edges of the Affordable Care Act as much as they can by rule. And there are some experts that question if they're overextending their reach of what they're allowed to do by rule. But they are trying to chip away at some of those edges of major provisions of the Affordable Care Act in compliance with things that they're hearing from some of the insurance industry. And we'll talk about some of those. Here's an example of things that are appearing in this April 9th rule. It's now a finalized rule. The draft rule was proposed at the end of 2017. It's now in its final state and it has yet to be implemented. That's the next step. But here's what we're looking at, changes to essential health benefits. And we have a separate video that goes into that a little bit more. But essential health benefits are those 10 categories of coverage that all plans have to offer, even if they're not on the marketplace, if they're off marketplace plans, there is an agreement that these are the plans that the covered service areas that will need coverage. And that's just the standard. That's now being chipped away at. And now that formula is going to look very different across states. It changes network adequacy requirements, income verification requirements, changes to navigators, trying to make it a little bit more difficult to have in-person assistance in your state when it comes time for open enrollment, new standards for direct enrollment, making it easier for insurance agents and brokers to make sure that people are getting into a plan, not necessarily a marketplace plan, changes to the medical loss ratio and rate review standards, and these could potentially be the most damaging, telling states that they can pick their own medical loss ratio if they think it's gonna build stability in their marketplace, which kind of opens the door for the way that we used to do insurance before the Affordable Care Act protections were instituted. Changes to risk adjustment and major changes to the shop exchange, that exchange for small businesses to purchase insurance as opposed to the individual market. Now, you can read this final rule for yourself. You can also read the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services press release that goes into a little bit more detail. And we've got a series of videos that you can watch that go into some of these provisions, such as that essential health benefit, the medical loss ratio and rate review in a little bit more detail. So stay tuned for those. You can always visit us at healthwatchwisconsin.org.